Well, hello everybody and welcome to the cooking show. Today we are going to make my legendary uh, beef stew. I don't know if legendary is the correct uh, term, but my family seems to like it and I like it too. It's, uh, it's a variation of a Belgian beer uh, stew uh, combined with a Cuban carne con papa. So um, that's what we're making. By the way, this, this, this is a dish that is going to take you a couple of hours to make, like two or three hours, because we, first we're going to boil that meat uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours, it depends on the quality of the meat. I think uh, uh, here I got some, some Publix uh, premium beef. And I believe with maybe an hour and a half, this will be uh, tender enough uh, to add the rest of the ingredients. So that's what we're gonna do first. Let's uh, hit this up. First of all, we got butter, and I like I like to, to brown the meat first with butter, and I like to use uh, pure Irish butter. It, it gives you great results. And they usually buy the one that comes in a container, but they didn't have one at uh, Publix this time. So I just bought this one, and actually, for cooking, this one might be a little bit better. Just so again, actually, for cooking butter, never cook it too hot because it tends to burn really easy. Maybe like all that cold. We're gonna use more or less a bit of butter and we're gonna brown this meat on all sides. Okay, here we go. Once that butter is nicely melted, let's put it a little higher so it, uh, it kind of uh, sears it nicely. We're gonna drop that meat in there. Boom! Oops. And sometimes I, I season the meat before we put it in here. So I just I just I just came back from Publix and uh, the kids uh, good, so I didn't have time to, to season it. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna season it here once I put it in there. We're gonna brown. Oh, it's starting to smell so good. But cooking with butter, it always smells so good. I love it. Let's move it around. You see, it's getting brown all sides. It's a beautiful thing. The Cuban version of this dish is, is called the carne con papa. And of course that, that's just plain, if you translate it, that's plain meat and potatoes. That's uh, what it's called. But in the case of the, the, the Cuban version, it would have a lot more tomato. I don't, I don't like to make it too tomatoey. And I originally learned how to make this dish from the Belgian recipe because we went to we went to Belgium. We were at, at Bruges, and I ordered the, the, the Belgian store. I love it. And uh, over there, they don't have it with it's not with potatoes. It's just plain meat, and they have it with, they have like a salad, you know, lettuce, or some kind of green veggies. But it was absolutely fantastic. And I found out that it's made with beer, and the quality of the beer you use for this is very important. You know, don't don't just. Uh, Use any PBR or any, any you, you, you want a flavorful beer. Okay, okay. Good. okay, let me get the beer and I have a good combination of two different beers that I use. Let me make sure this doesn't burn. Hmm, I love meat. Can I say? And here we go. The last time I did this, I used uh, a fat tire, but this time I decided to go with Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and uh, Cigar City IPA. This one will give it, give it that IPA strong flavor and this one will smooth it out the flavor. The last time that, that I did it, I think it was uh, the first, the best uh, stew. Everybody agreed that that was one of the best I've ever made. And that's the two beers that I used. I've done it also with Guinness. Guinness is a good beer to, to make this uh, stew as well. With the, with the stout. You know what? And give it a little more heat because And the meat that I'm using is just the, the one that says meat for beef for stew. So it's probably chalk or some kind of fatty part of the cow. Okay, let me cut another slice of butter and put it in there. It's gonna be so good. 
I love cooking with butter, especially in this uh, this phase of the, of the preparation. You remember when they said that butter used to be bad, and now it's supposed to be good? And margarine is supposed to be bad, and it used to be good, you know. They change their minds quite often, don't they? Okay, here we go. Second batch, let's bring the heat on. Make it hot. And here we go, second batch. Look at this. First, we're gonna brown it on, the, on all sides, almost to the point of almost burning it. Sometimes I like it that way. Okay, let's put some salt here. And some salt here as well. Oops. And some pepper. You know, start giving it some flavor. Oh man, I wish, I, I wish you guys were here to smell this. <laughs> you ain't smelled nothing yet. Mm, you see, you see that it burns up a little bit, but perfect because that seals in the, all the, all the juices of the meat. This is going to be so tender once we're done with it. Let's put a little more salt here. And a little more, uh, no, no, not there. <laughs> Okay, let's make it really hot and we're gonna put the rest of the meat, the meat back in. And now we've got our IPA and our pale ale. And we're gonna pour them both. And as you can see, I made it a the heat, I made it really, really hot. I put it on high. Yes, I forgot to leave these beers out of the, uh, of the fridge, so they're kind of cold. Now I'm gonna add a bit of water here, because this is gonna reduce, even, even covered. And um, we'll be back in about an hour. So what, it's about 2.17. I think I'm gonna come back in an hour, and we're gonna start preparing the, the sofrito, which you learned what a sofrito is in the previous episode. Otherwise, a uh, link somewhere up here. I'll put a link to that the previous uh, cooking video where I made the shredded chicken. But sofrito is basically just a Spanish. Uh, it's a mix of uh, onions and and uh, garlic and peppers and usually tomatoes. You know, it's uh, it's that base that uh, most uh, Spanish food is is based on. It's based, based on. So it looks like it wants to boil. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt. You see why I cannot uh, <laughs> give you the exact recipe because I usually I, I just put a little more this, a little more there. It's crazy. Hmm. <laughs> it's steaming up. Oh yeah, it's boiling all right. So I'll bring this down to a simmer, sure. And uh, it is 220. Tell you what, at 3:30 we'll be back and start making the sofrito. Bye now. afraid this camera is going to fall any day now <laughs> anyways yeah it took it, it took me a little longer than anticipated because I actually pre-cut some of these um, vegetables so we don't have to, to deal with that and let's look at our meat and uh, right off the bat I see that I may need a little more liquid here and I'm tempted to add another beer I'm going to use the lighter of the beers which is the the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and as you can see I'm, I'm making it really really hot because the beer is cold which is not the best practice but actually the best practice is to drink the last little bit 
Ah, it's fabulous. Okay, let's move this to the back and get my large skillet here. I'm sorry, the lighting is really bad here, guys. I'm working on that. And here we have a beautiful yellow onion and we're gonna use olive oil. I, I happen to like this, uh, this California extra virgin olive oil, first cold press. Okay, let's cut the onion. Let's move it around a little bit. Coat all these onions with the oil and I'm gonna lower it a little bit too. Hmm, beautiful, beautiful. And every time we add something, we're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. So everybody has a little bit of salt and pepper with the lowly onion. And now, for the garlic, I've got this um, a pre-peeled organic garlic. I used to get the, the regular garlic, but you know what? It's almost the same. I don't think they add any real additives to this. So now I, I buy them peeled. It's much more convenient. Now we're gonna add a generous amount of garlic here and the, and the larger ones, we're gonna smash them with, with the knife and that way the juices, all the juices come out and it's gonna give our, our, give our food that delicious garlic flavor. We love garlic, that's it. And I'm not mincing them uh, very small either because sometimes we like to find the piece of garlic and eat it as is, as such. So, you know, some, some of the pieces of garlic I'm keeping rather large, larger than, than you would normally do. Because besides the flavor, we like to encounter the chunkiness. Hmm, that's looking beautiful. Let's let's move it around once again. And now let's let's raise the heat a little bit, and we're gonna and we're gonna we're gonna cook this until it's it starts to get a golden, you know, and the onions start to get translucent. Ooh, I missed one. There you go. And then. As you can see, I pre-cut my celery, my, uh, and you see it's pretty chunky too. My celery, my, um, my carrots, oh my God. And uh, down there we also have the peppers, red peppers and uh, green peppers, half of each. Maybe I should put the mushrooms first because the mushrooms, they take longer to cook. And I like them to, I, I want them to, to get a little golden too. Maybe I won't do the whole thing, maybe I'll do half. These are pretty big. I love, I love mushrooms. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's enough mushroom. Okay, let's do some salt and pepper here for the mushrooms. And I'm gonna hold off on the rest of the ingredients until the end, until the very end. Let's give it some time. Okay. Here we go, it's starting to look beautiful, beautiful here. I wish you could smell this. Now let's put in the rest of this stuff. Which is, uh, this stuff is really not going to cook. This is gonna finish cooking. And when we put them in the stew, because all this stuff eventually is going into our stew. But I like to, oops, don't go anywhere. I like to, we keep them here, we're gonna lower. And remember that golden cooking wine that I used in the previous video? Well, I like to use this stuff on almost anything. <laughs> so, let's put a little bit. So all these veggies start cooking in that, uh, golden cooking wine vino seco okay. I'm gonna cook this covered for a couple of minutes let's check on our meat uh, we could use a little more heat maybe there we go and while this cooks I'm going to peel the potatoes hmm And 
And now I'm going to add, oh, I almost forgot. We have uh, two more ingredients that I didn't show you. I'm going to add some sweet peas to this uh, beautiful sofrito. It doesn't look very sofrito, but it is going to be good in a second here. And then, then we've got our Spanish manzanilla thrown Spanish olives. And I'm gonna, and this time I'm gonna cut them in half. There we go. Let's get a few of them out here. Hmm, don't go anywhere. Hmm. Love onion, love, love um, olives. Here we go. Hmm, starting to look good. I'm gonna cut them in half just so you know the juices come out not roughly not all of them have to be cut this is just a it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that and these uh, olives they do have the um, red pepper you know sweet pepper inside Now we're going to throw all these olives in here. Sweet. Love the flavor they give to any, any stew. I got this uh, Sunday marinara by Del Grosso and it has, um, it's pretty much just tomato. It has uh, tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, fresh onions, uh, sea salt, garlic, basil, black pepper, and parsley. So it's not just tomato sauce, it has other, other ingredients. I put a little bit, a little more there. Mm. Oh yeah. And now we're gonna add the rest of the missing ingredients. And what are you gonna, we gonna add? Uh, you might ask. You know, sometimes I play by ear. And today I feel like um, I feel like oregano, of course. And somebody told me that this was not a good idea to pour it directly from the from the container, and I understand that, but you know what, I, uh, we're gonna add a little cumin. You can see this is, we're not gonna add some basil as well. I'm gonna add that smoked paprika that I love. And I think that's it. <laughs> uh, maybe some more salt and pepper. Yeah, just more salt. You know what, let's make it a little spicy. We're gonna add some crystal hot sauce. Just a tad. We don't wanna overwhelm it. We don't want it to taste like a, like. But it does uh, give it a little kick, for sure. And now I forgot to cut the potatoes. Okay, let me lower this, it's starting to. We stick to the bottom, but that's that makes it so good. Let's cut the potatoes. Let me put this back on this side. <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough room. Imagine when we have to do this in the RV. And just you wanna cut them like in, like so, you know. And we're gonna put them in here so they get the flavors. Now let's coat everything together and now, ooh, there we go. Actually, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this, get rid of this. And now what we're going to do, after all this is all nicely coated together, we're gonna pour it here into our stew and see if we need uh, uh, more water or if we're fine. Here we go. I think we're gonna be fine because there we go. We 
we will just put it here. And now we're gonna uh, make sure that all the stuff that needs to be cooked is immersed in the water, especially the potatoes, because those potatoes are obviously still completely raw. We're gonna put it there. And in order for this to think, thicken a little more, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, cornstarch. Just a tiny little bit. I'm gonna mix it up together with that beautiful, beautiful liquid down there. Yeah, that's more than enough. Just then, as it cools down in a, in a couple of hours, it's gonna take that gravy-like uh, texture, which it goes very well with white rice, which is the staple of Cuban cuisine, by the way. Cubans eat everything with white rice, almost everything. <laughs> but of course, this is uh, not anymore a, a Cuban dish or a Belgian dish. This is a Robert dish, because I cook it, you know, I don't follow. And I started with a Belgian recipe, but as you can uh, tell, it's, it's not a Belgian recipe anymore. Well, we're going to let this uh, simmer here for about half an hour, so the potatoes uh, cooked thoroughly. And then I'm going to give it a taste test, and it might need a little more salt and pepper. You don't know. We'll see. Bye now. We'll be back in half an hour. As you can see, I'm cooking some basmati rice as well. Let's take a look. Mm, whoa. <laughs> okay, let's take a look again from a little further away. It's looking good. Let's give it a taste test. And I forgot to put on the mic. Show you the final product. Yep, perhaps a little more potatoes than I usually put, but mm, it smells good. Bon appetit. Magnifico. Mm. Es mejor que quedar. <laughs> 